Women's weights are normally distributed. The average woman weighs 152.2 pounds with a standard deviation of 26.1 pounds. What is the probability that a randomly selected woman weighs at most 120 pounds? So some important keywords jump out. I see the normally distributed phrase here. So I know women's weights are normally distributed. They give us the average and the standard deviation. And then they say, what's the probability? That a randomly selected woman, just one woman there, right? A randomly selected woman weighs at most 120 pounds. Okay, so I know it's normally distributed, so I'm going to draw my bell curve. With that, I'll label the mean and the standard deviation. The mean off to the left, standard deviation off to the left. The mean is 152.2, the standard deviation is 26.1 pounds. Okay, the Z axis here is centered at zero. The X axis, which represents women's weights, the average weight is 152.2. They're asking for the probability a woman weighs at most 120. 120 is to the left of 152, so I will put that on the left here. Draw my line, and then when it says at most, at most is a maximum, right? So up to 120 pounds at most would be that weight or less than. So it's actually going to be to the left that we will shade. Okay, so we're looking for all the area to the left of 120. So normally I would go and look up 120, um, but I can't go look up 120 on our z-chart. I've got to first convert it into a z-score. So let's go ahead and do that first. So remember z is equal to x minus the mean over sigma. That means z is 120, which is the score we want to convert, minus the mean of 152.2, divided by the standard deviation of 26.1. Let's see what that gives us. Okay, so we have 120 minus 152.2, and then divide that by 26.1. And when you're done, you get the answer negative 1.23. Negative 1.23, that's our z-score. Okay, now if we look that number up, let's think about what we'll get. We'll get the area from here to here on the curve, correct? There to there on the curve. That's not actually what we want, but that's all we can do. We can look up this z-score and get this area. That's the only area the table gives us. Well, let's go to the table, get that area, and see what we have to do to finish the problem. So let's go to the z-score now, leave the z-score table now, and look up negative 1.23. Okay, so now we're going to look up negative 1.23 on the curve. So let's find the 1.23 row. Remember, there's no negatives. So we have the 1.2 row and then the 3. We find the answer is 0 0.3907. 0 0.3907. Okay, so we find the answer 0 0.3907 when we look up negative 1.23. All right, well, that's the area here in the white space. To get the tail area, we have to use that little trick that says, look, half the curve has 50% of the area. This part's about 39.07, so we're going to subtract the 39.07 from the 50 to be left with the shaded area. So the trick is to take the tail area of 0 0.500 and subtract off the area that we do know for the half, 39.07. That should give us the part we don't know for the half, which is the part in the white space here. Let's use a little old school borrowing here. We get 10 take away 7 is 3, 9 take away 0 is 9, 9 take away 9 is 0, and 4 take away 3 is 1. So we get the answer 0 0.1093. That's the area in the tail, 0 0.1093. And this is the area we're looking for. So we're done. We know now the probability that a woman, a woman's weight, is less than or equal to 120 pounds is the same as the probability that a z-score is less than or equal to negative 1.23 and that turns out to be 10.93 percent so around 11 percent of women weigh 120 pounds or less